Welcome back to Daybreak on this Monday morning, time now 623. This week in Storytime with Aunt Phil, we've all heard tales of Klondike gold and how thousands of people came north in search of their fortunes the year 1898. Ooh, but did you know there's a specific day to celebrate the first gold nugget discovery? Author Laurel Downing Bill explains. August 17th, 1896. It was the day three men spotted the deposit of nuggets that started the Klondike Gold Rush. Canadians recognize it as Klondike Discovery Day and credit George Washington Carmack with spotting the gold. Yeah, but Laurel, wasn't it really their native companion that first spotted the gold flecks downriver in the Yukon Territory from 40 Mile? James Mason, commonly referred to as Skookum Jim, and his nephew, Charlie, also called Tagish and Dawson Charlie, traveled with George Carmack that summer day in 1896 as he searched for a good spot to go fishing. However, fishing turned out very poor, so the men decided to chop wood instead. Now, Skookum Jim went along Rabbit Creek looking for good trees. And then that's when he looked down and he saw a large supply of gold nuggets in the water. He and Carmack and Charlie decided they needed to stake a discovery claim. Now, a discovery claim is the uh, first claim in a mining area and usually becomes the center point of the mining area. So under whose name was that first claim recorded? Well, Skookum, whose sister Kate was married to Carmack, thought it should be his by right of discovery. But Carmack told him that a native would never be allowed to record it. So after some discussion, they decided that Carmack would stake the first claim and assign half interest of it to Jim. And since the discoverer was allowed two claims, Carmack claimed one below for himself and two below for Charlie, and Jim claimed one above. So did all the men make their fortunes in gold? By spring of 1898, they had cleared 150,000 between them, which is about four and a half million dollars today. And that's when they decided to head south to see what civilization had to offer them. Civilization, how would, uh, how would those men react to it? <laughs> well, they sailed down to Seattle and stayed at the Butler, which is the finest hotel in Seattle at the time. Now, she, Jim, and Charlie also got a taste for champagne. And after several glasses, had a great time tossing money and nuggets into the street to watch uh, Seattle citizens push and shove trying to get to the riches. Did their fortunes last into their old age? Carmack uh, divorced Kate soon after and remarried. He invested in uh, real estate in Seattle and operated a mine in California. And then at the age of 62, he died in 1922 of pneumonia. Kate, she moved back to Caribou Crossing, which was renamed Car Cross. She lived with her brother Jim, who also supported her, and then she died in 1920. Charlie, he sold his mine in 1901 and bought the Car Cross Hotel and lived lavishly for about seven years until in a drunken spree um, in 1908, he fell off a bridge that December and drowned at the age of 42. And Jim, he also sold his mine in 1904, even though he was receiving royalties of 90,000 a year, which is about two and a half million today, he could not stop himself from looking for that next big strike. However, the Canadians do celebrate and keep their memories alive on Discovery Day in Canada. Next week on Storytime with Aunt Phil, the story of one of Alaska's most respected bush pilots, Bob Campbell-Reeve, and how he built a successful airline that bore his name. All right.